little trailer and it looks so good. I'm so excited to talk to you about it. I've watched it over a dozen times at this point and I smile the whole way through every time. I have a lot of positive to say. I have some things that I'm not completely convinced on. I'm excited to talk to you about it. This one opens with Roger and again, I said this in the last trailer in the teaser reaction, I love the sets for this show. So far they look really, really good. They look full, they look filled out. It makes this world feel big and the set of Roger's execution I think looks so good. I still have the same nitpicks that I had before about costumes. They do look brand new, fresh out of the packaging, but that is something I can very easily get over. That's very much a nitpick and nowhere near my biggest complaint at this point. But between the execution stand and the very brief flash of a fight that we got where pirates were jumping from one ship to another, getting ready to engage in some awesome nautical battle, it all looks so fun. It looks so, I just really like the feel of it so far. And I am an Inyaki fangirl. I love his smile. I love his voice. I love his delivery. I love how hopeful and doe-eyed he seems and his, his core belief that being a pirate and exploring the world, exploring the seas is the best thing there is. I think so too, Luffy. Live action is going to have a different look and a different feel and a different sound than the anime and the manga do, but for a live action Luffy, Inyaki is it. He's perfect in my eyes. There are a couple of brief flashes of more serious scenes that we got from him that don't land quite as perfectly for me, so I'll have to see those actually happen in the moment and see how they land, but the moments of joy, of this childlike excitement for the world, he kills it. Zoro and Sanji both look amazing to me. Uh, that kind of stoic, standoffish, uh, we're not friends vibe that Zoro had in the beginning before he was wholly committed to Luffy and when he still didn't like Nami, when they were bickering all the time in the manga, he lands that really, really well. And I'm excited to see his character grow and see how the actor portrays him once he grows outside of that role. Sanji, I think, looks suave and cool and I, I really dig his vibe as well, as well as the vibe of Sanji and Zoro together, bickering, going back and forth, but still defending each other and fighting next to each other. I love it. I don't like Nami yet. And that makes me really sad because I was very excited about her casting. I think that she looks perfect. I still have a little bit of a qualm over her hair. It looks a little bit weird, but I don't really care that much. But as far as her face, as far as just like Nami, I feel like in a picture, she looks exactly right. Performance wise, I haven't been sold on her yet. And I think, I hope it's because of the scenes that they've chosen for the teaser and the trailer. They're choosing very static scenes for her where she's usually either standing still or sitting still. She's not really moving. And her delivery in these lines is also very cardboard. Like there's hardly any movement or facial expression. She's just kind of meh. Like if you look at the way Sanji's actor or Luffy's actor are delivering their lines, there's a lot of body movement that goes along with what they're saying, whereas Nami just kind of delivers the line standing still. And again, I really hope that this is just a symptom of the scenes that they picked for the trailers, and when I see her in a full episode, I'll see a wide range of emotions and delivery. Like during the hat pass off, we actually see some emotion out of her, so I'm really hopeful that we're going to get more from her. I just need to see more of her than what I've seen in the trailers to be completely sold and I feel the same way about Usopp. We've barely seen Usopp so I would really like to get more of Usopp. I love Buggy. He looks creepy and stupid and that's exactly right because he's the first big enemy we face. He's the first big threat that we have so he should be creepy. He should be overwhelming and daunting. He should be like this, ah, what is happening? This, this clown with knives cackling at me, dismembering himself and chucking those members at me. Like that's upsetting <laughs> and it should be. But it also looks stupid. When he shouts his chop chop cannon, he looks so stupid. I mean, it looks great. It looks the perfect amount of what are we doing here, but also smooth and clean. I don't want it to look like a real dismemberment. I want it to have that sort of like, we're not in the real world doing real world mechanics sort of feel, but still looking smooth and not janky. And I think that they've got that balance really, really well for a lot of scenes. 
but still you have a dismembered clown spinning his body parts and shouting chop chop cannon and that's derpy and I love that that's exactly what a threatening clown that near takes them out who turns into a meme should be I mean he's more than a meme he's my captain and my true pirate king but you know you know what I mean. I feel like the Arlong design is gonna be a little bit controversial, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say I love it. I think it looks amazing. I was waiting to see what the Fishmen were gonna look like, and I'm glad they went all out. I'm glad they went for it, and it feels right. It looks great. Again, it looks otherworldly, and it reminds us that none of this is supposed to feel like our world, but it's also menacing, and I think that, I think his face especially just looks stellar. And even more than that, the actor, the delivery is incredible. I love his voice, I love his delivery, I love his facial expressions beneath all of the cosmetics and the, the, um, <laughs> I don't know film words. The prosthetics, whatever, you know what I'm saying. The acting beneath all of the costume design actually still shows through just as strongly as the costume design itself. And I think he looks amazing. I just really think for so many things throughout this trailer, they strike that perfect balance of this is otherworldly and strange and I shouldn't, I shouldn't expect it to feel comfortable to me, but at the same time, the quality is there. I just think it looks so good. Enough praise. Let's complain a little bit. I'm not convinced about some of the action that we see in the trailer. There are a few scenes like Sanji's flip kick and Sanji kicking that one guy into the water uh, when he and Zoro are fighting next to each other that looks very much like we edited out the ropes that they're suspended on, which was the only thing, I think, other than the Nami feeling very cardboard in certain spots, which don't don't take that wrong. I'm really excited about Nami's actress and I want to be proven wrong about that. I wanna look back and say, you were being too harsh about a clip, a couple of clips that you saw. The whole thing looks amazing. I wanna be positive, but that's how I'm feeling right now. Anyway, that and this are the only two things that actually kind of pulled me out of the, the immersion of the trailer because there are a lot of action scenes that look stellar to me, but there were a couple that looked very ropes magic to me. And I've been saying throughout this that it should look like a combination of this is otherworldly, we shouldn't be expecting our real world mechanics, and this looks smooth. So I really hope to be proven wrong about this as well when I see not just a, an isolated clip that I'm hyper analyzing, but I see the whole scene together. I hope that I can say, yeah, that's not real world mechanics, but it fits and it's solid and I didn't think about it too much. That would be the goal. I'm just saying that right now I'm not fully convinced about these things, especially because I've seen plenty of clips of the of behind the scenes Sanji's actor kicking and fighting and showing off how much training he's done for this role. But other special effects things like the ships and the sea beast look amazing. And I'm way more positive about the gum gum animation than I was in the teaser. I, again, I was kind of on the fence. I don't know how I feel about this yet, but seeing more of it and seeing it with more movement, it looks so good. Again, like I keep saying, it looks cartoony yet smooth, which is the perfect balance for this particular series. It looks otherworldly and odd, and at first my brain goes, that's not right, but then it goes, but this is something different, and it actually looks really solid. It's good quality cartoony CGI, and I think it fits what we need for this series kind of perfectly. The humor lands for me. Uh, Sanji and Zoro bickering back and forth, which I already mentioned. I love the humor that was in the teaser trailer. I loved uh, Luffy and um, Kobe talking about the bounties and Kobe's freaking out. There's too many pirates, this is horrible. And Luffy's like, yes, this is horrible. Where's my face? I love Luffy talking to the news crew and inviting the news crew to be a part of his crew. And then it flies away because it's a bird and it has a job to do and he's like, Mutiny. I love, and even the subtle humor that doesn't actually get an emphasis in this trailer, like when Luffy and Usopp, and I'm sure the whole crew, are all sitting around the table, and you just see Luffy and Usopp, and Luffy's little milk in, with, a, with a bendy straw that he's chilling with, like, this is our pirate captain, and he's chilling at a bar with milk and a bendy straw, and that makes me happy. Rapid fire, a couple of other flash appearances that we saw. Garp looks great, Mihawk looks great, the Jolly Roger looks great, Kobe looks good, Shanks I'm not sold on yet. My opinion on this could change, but at a, at a flash glance, 
That's not the casting that I personally would have chosen for him. I'm not sure that I feel like his look quite matches Shanks's suave, young, like I feel like he should be younger, lighthearted, but can get stuff done if he needs to kind of vibe. And that's a lot to put on just a flash appearance. So again, this isn't me saying no, this is me saying I'm not completely completely convinced just yet. But at the end of the day, even if I never feel like this actor looks the way I would want the actor for Shanks to look, as long as he can get the mannerisms and the personality down, that's really all that matters. They're also shuffling some of the scenes around in this season. Most notably, Nami is in Shelltown, as well as potentially in the fight against Arlong, which I'm fine with. I think that having more Nami working with the crew, participating with them, is not a bad thing. And I expected them to have to condense and shuffle some things, cut some things, move stuff around. That's how adaptations tend to go. And to try to condense a hundred chapters into what is it, like eight episodes? That's a big task, so I'm fine with this. I am curious about the hat pass off and how that all is going to work. Is, is he gonna pass off the hat and then she's going to, they're gonna have their big emotional moment and then she's gonna stand up and start fighting, which I'm not sure how I feel about. Or is there gonna be a larger gap of time between the hat pass off and the fight? Are they just gonna change the order of things where the hat pass off happens in the climax of the battle? Like they've been battling and now it feels like this may not work out for them. They may lose and so she loses all hope and then Luffy says, you're a part of my crew. We, we move forward, that could be really good. We'll just have to see. I'm really open-minded about the changes, about the cuts, about the shuffling that they may have to do for, that they will have to do for this adaptation because what I think they're doing the best so far is they, I think they have the vibe down. And I know that this is gonna be a subjective experience. Other people will view it differently because what people look for in the live action is going to be different. But for me, I don't want the live action to be a one-for-one -one remake. I don't want it to try to be the anime, but with real people. I want it to be its own thing. I want it to take this story that we love and make it work for a new medium and changes have to be made for that. All I ask is that they keep the heart of the story and I think that they're they're doing it. I think they got the vibe, that adventure, that lightheartedness, the promise of, of stronger emotions, that uh, stronger emotional moments that will hit hard. The found family, the challenges, the really unique, wide open world. And I'm excited to see what they do with it. I'm excited to see what it looks like for them. It'll never be as good as the manga. I never will expect it to match the original but I'm excited to see what this version of my story looks like. And it looks like what it's going to be is something that honors the original and brings something different to the table while still being the story we love. And I'm excited for that. Just please don't dump the entire season on us at once. I know that's Netflix's style. I know that that's what they do like 99% of the time, just a season dump, but I don't think it's the right call. I don't think it's the best thing for the fans, for us to be able to take it week to week and enjoy it and have those weekly conversations and be able to really dig into the story and let that hype build and last. I think it's better for the show too, to keep the story's name in people's mouths for a long time instead of just a spike of attention and then it dies for a long time. Week to week just seems better to me for every reason. But the biggest reason is a selfish one and that's that the reason I make videos is for the community aspect. It's for the discussions and for the excitement of us getting to talk about our favorite stories together. So I want it to last. I want to enjoy it because this is something that I'm actually excited for, that I actually think is going to be good and that I'm gonna wanna talk about for more than just just let's all binge it real quick and then talk about it real quick and then uh, that'll be done. So please Netflix, do the thing that you almost never do and give us a weekly episode drop or at least do it in batches like you did with Arcane. Anyway, what do y'all think? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you excited? Do you have some reservations? I think in order for this to work, some major changes have to happen. And because major changes will happen, there will be a lot of different opinions on how those changes are handled. I personally am really excited to talk about all of that. So I hope you are too. And I am excited to see what you think. This video is being posted on a Saturday because I'm excited, but normally I post videos every Monday and Friday on this channel, Tuesdays and Thursdays on my review channel, where we talk about what I'm reading week to week. I do reading vlogs, I do reviews. I'm currently reading Dragon Ball. I also do new chapter live streams. It's an awesome community there if you wanna check it out. I'll see you again soon, bye.